If I were to tell you about an organization that is centered in Europe that has a long history of spreading an ideology and influencing politicians, led by some creepy old guy that loves to scold everyone around the world about capitalism and wealth inequality and climate change, you might think I'm speaking about the Catholic Church. And you'd be correct. But I'm sure many others may assume that I'm speaking of the World Economic Forum. People keep asking me to uh, comment on the World Economic Forum in uh, one form or another. Just the other day, someone on Twitter reached out to me asking me to comment on this video from the World Economic Forum about this uh, concept of uh, stakeholder capitalism. Stakeholder capitalism. But what does stakeholder capitalism actually mean? And is it necessarily a good thing? The term gained traction in the mid-1980s, a time when politicians like Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher were promoting the idea that widespread prosperity could be created by unleashing the animal spirits of profit-seeking capitalism. Their policies were built upon the ideas of economists like Milton Friedman, who famously wrote that there was one and only one social responsibility of business, to use its resources and engage in activities designed to increase its profits so long as it stays within the rules of the game. The doctrine of stakeholder capitalism took off as a reaction against this philosophy. It holds that corporate boards and executives should not simply try to serve their shareholders by increasing profits, but should pay equal attention to the interests of other stakeholders, such as customers, employees, and society as a whole. Well, it sounds to me like stakeholder capitalism is what uh, the philosopher Ayn Rand might call an anti-concept, which is a rationally unusable term that is used to obliterate legitimate concepts. In this case, I think the concept stakeholder is meant to obliterate the concept shareholder by making a package package deal out of shareholders with customers, employees, and society as a whole. Stakeholder capitalism, which would shift businesses away from just profit, because... If we want to change where the focus of our recovery will go, then we need a new dashboard for the new economy. And that needs to encompass people, planet, prosperity, and institutions. Giving people a real stake in the economy. Let's simplify this dumb concept for a minute. Let's say that you and some of your friends decide to pool some money together to purchase a house for, say, I don't know, quarter million dollars. You and your friends own the house, and you decide to use Airbnb to rent it out to customers at a profit. <laughs> In the meantime, you're employing people to help maintain and clean the property between rentals and uses. As far as society as a whole is concerned, maybe you could say that your business activities uh having an impact on society by stimulating demand in the local tourism economy and perhaps driving up home prices in the area. You and your friends are making money hand over fist. But one day, your house burns down and now you and your friends are about a quarter million dollars in the hole. Now, will the customers that have used your house along with the people that uh, you pay to help maintain and clean your property along with the local community? Will any of these people be responsible for or obligated to help you rebuild the property? No, 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 of course not. Nor should they be. So then why in the blue hell should they be considered stakeholders in your business? You know, that's a really good question. From what I can tell, stakeholder capitalism is designed to guilt business executives into acting more altruistically than they otherwise should be. And hopefully this dumb, destructive idea never gets codified into any law. Hopefully the laws that mandate fun stuff like fiduciary responsibility neuter the attempts of business executives to sacrifice 
their investors money. Why would anyone in their right mind want to invest their savings into a company that is acting altruistically? If you want to be altruistic with your money, here's a thought, just give it away. Find a nice charity or go surf GoFundMe to find someone who really needs some money. Or if you're in a big city, just Walk outside and find a homeless person to give your money to. Whatever you decide to do, leave the selfish profit seekers out of your altruism malarkey. And there is something to be said about the moral being the practical. It is often in a business's selfish interest to offer their consumers a quality product at a low price. And it's often in a business's selfish interest to offer good paying jobs to workers who can help make the business more productive and profitable. And society at large often benefits from such profitable enterprises in countless ways. And guess what? If shares of uh, a profitable business are available to the public, then everyone can get a piece of those fat profits by buying some shares. All that said, Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum can take their stakeholder capitalism idea and get bent. As for the World Economic Forum, it is fair to say that it's an institution where so-called elites, I'm talking politicians, intellectuals, business leaders, celebrities, journalists, all these elites, they do get together at the World Economic Forum to talk about big plans and big ideas for the economy. Many ideas and plans of which are total g -g 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 garbage, as I just noted with stakeholder capitalism. A lot has been made about this quote from a few years ago, something about how by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. And maybe for some people, it is the case that owning less is better. So here's my counter. Why don't we just have a free market and uh, let individuals decide how much private property they need to be happy? At this year's World Economic Forum, we got to see former Vice President Al Gore once again go off on another temper tantrum about climate change. Woo! But let's not act like climate alarmism began with the World Economic Forum. Al Gore himself has been on his anti-fossil fuel crusade for decades at this point. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs. In the 1990s, Al Gore authored an introduction to a reprint of Silent Spring, which is an influential book on the environmentalist movement, a book that predates the World Economic Forum. And if the World Economic Forum stopped existing tomorrow, many politicians around the world would still try to pursue destructive economic policies in the name of saving the world from climate change. <laughs> We also saw EU politicians like Vera Horova, Jorova, however you say her name. She was talking about the wonders of hate speech laws. Blow it out your ass. And how they need to be applied to social media companies like Twitter. It would be very nice to see someone like Elon Musk stand up to these g, -g, -g goons So maybe it's good to uh, treat these speakers with a healthy dose of skepticism and scrutiny. But a lot of people like to talk about the World Economic Forum as if they have some coherent political agenda. Meanwhile, you see politicians from all sorts of political backgrounds speaking at this forum. This year, we saw Democrats like Kirsten Sinema, Joe Manchin, John Kerry, and Al Gore. We also saw Republicans like Governor Brian Kemp from Georgia. In the past, former President Donald Trump has spoken at this event, as has former right-wing President of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. The World Economic Forum has also featured dictators like Xi 
Jinping of Communist China and Vladimir Putin over the years. The World Economic Forum admittedly talks about how we need to entertain and listen to all sorts of voices and ideas, including ones that you may disagree with, so that everyone can be heard and so that we can all work out our differences together or something. So again, a lot of crazy stuff is said at Davos, but I'm not sure that the World Economic Forum has some coherent political agenda. So if I'm being honest, I do find it difficult at times to not become jaded about the hysteria surrounding the World Economic Forum, especially when many of the people who shriek about the elites meeting up in Davos to discuss how to violate our rights and manage the economy. A lot of these same complaints often come from people who also want to violate our rights and manage the economy. That's just not smart. Going back to the issue of free speech, I saw a lot of people rightfully losing their shit over Vera Jorova, however you say her name, Talking about the restrictions on free speech. It would have been nice to see a lot of these people show as much outrage when uh, Senator Mike Lee proposed a law that would censor obscenity on the internet. And who is really a bigger threat to free speech in America? A U.S. senator or some crazy European Union bureaucrats. I came across this video put out by Turning Point USA where they talked about how the World Economic Forum has slowly moved away from capitalism since its inception, which I find ironic because the same could be said about Turning Point USA. I also got asked to take a look at this video put out by The Hill featuring Brianna Joy Gray and Robbie Sove talking about the World Economic Forum. For those who don't know, Brianna Joy Gray is a socialist who served uh, as Bernie Sanders press secretary during his 2020 failed presidential run. So I think it's fair to assume that uh, Brianna Joy Gray is not exactly opposed to economic planning. Anyway, I thought this clip was really telling. The wealth tax that leftists advocate for is not because we believe we need to get that money to pay it to the poor. I know that not everybody believes in modern monetary theory or various other kinds of economic systems, but we don't actually believe that you need to tax to spend. You can believe what you want, it's not material to this conversation. But what's important to note is the reason that leftists are so invested in a wealth tax is because we do believe that that huge aggregation of money leads to anti-democratic actions. You guys getting this? It turns out that wealth taxes, they're not about financing generous welfare programs to help raise people out of poverty or promote economic prosperity. No, 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 no. Wealth taxes, they're about making sure that wealthy people don't have too much money because the aggregation of money itself leads to anti-democratic policies. Don't make me tap the sign, you guys. So yeah, it's a good idea to keep an eye on the World Economic Forum, but also beware of the wannabe economic planners who are sounding the alarms about the World Economic Forum. Tucker Carlson of Fox News is another one of these characters shrieking about the World Economic Forum. I guess good old Tucker Carlson got bored with finding buses to throw the free market under. Yeah, Tucker Carlson, he loves to complain about how the libs want to outlaw your gas stove and your menthol cigarettes, yet also wants to keep driverless trucks and cannabis off the market. Then they'll work to make it easier for your kids to smoke weed because, hey, freedoms, hey, freedoms, hey, freedom. Yeah, what a hero for freedom. You got to fight for freedom no matter what. Uh, you absolutely suck. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the World Economic Forum and all of the rhetoric surrounding it. What are your thoughts on the World Economic Forum? Why don't you let me know in the comment section down below?